In this tutorial we're going to look at creating the model that you can see here. We're going to open up a file that already has vectors in and we're going to take those vectors and look at using the create shape tool to create the components that form this model. Once we've got this model we're then going to move over to the toolpath and look at how we can create toolpaths to cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's just go over to file and we'll just close this down and then we're going to go and open an existing file. So from the Teddy Bear project folder we're going to open the Teddy Bear vector file and then press open. So the file that you can see here is a set of vectors that were all drawn in the software. Now to create these vectors we either use the draw circle or the draw ellipse option under the create vectors section in the drawing tab. The only one that's been edited slightly is this vector here that represents the mouth area. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at selecting these vectors one by one and use the create shape modeling tool in order for us to create components that make up the bear's head. So that we can easily select the vectors and see what's happening while we're creating the shapes I'm going to tile the windows. So we're going to come over to the 2D view control and we're going to use this option here to tile the windows vertically. That way I can see the 2D view in the left hand side and then I can go and see the 3D view on the right hand side. And This is where we'll start to see components that we create. To build our components we're going to come down to the bottom of the interface and I'm going to click on the modeling tab. So this is the second tab in the left hand panel. So now that we're in the modeling tab we now have access to all of the icons that allow us to create and edit shapes in the software. And the bottom area here is what we call the component tree. So every time we create a new component we will see that listed here in the lower half of my modeling tab and the result of the visible components in the combine modes will be shown in the 3D view and that's what we'd call the composite model. I currently have no components in my component tree and so I have no composite model to view here in the 3D view. Now before I go and create any components I'm going to start by organising my component tree. We always start a job with level 1. Now levels are a way for me to organise my component tree where I can change the name if I wanted to along with the combine mode. So I'm going to select that to right mouse click use the option to rename the level. And I'm going to rename this level Base. As I'm going to create my model bottom up. So we'll create this face shape first and when I create that it will be added to the base level. I can also alter the combine mode of the level to change how it interacts with other levels. As this is my first level I have nothing else to combine this level with so I will just keep this set to add. And we'll talk more about combine modes later on in this tutorial. For this example we're going to exclusively use the modeling function called create shape. So this is the first icon under the modeling tools section and when I click on this icon uh, this will open up the create shape form and now we're ready to start selecting shapes and assigning profiles to them. So using this function we're going to select a vector within the 2D view so I'm going to click on the circle that represents the bear's face and then we're going to assign a shape profile to this vector. In this case I'm going to go with the curved profile so I'm going to select this option here and then we can control this shape using various options within this form. So we're going to alter the angle of this. I'm just going to highlight the number that's already in there and I'm going to type in a specific value of 30 degrees. And we move on to the base height. I'm going to make sure that I have a value of 0 in there. For the final height, I'm going to use the option for no limit. Then if we move further down I'm going to make sure that the tilt option is unchecked 
and then we come into this option here to combine with other components so this is where we set the combine mode of this component and I'm going to choose this option here to add if we hover over there we should see it's going to tell us that this is the add option and then if we move across we also have subtract we have the option to merge and then we have the option to merge low for this example we're going to use the add option and then we can come into the name option here highlight the text and then we'll give that a name so we're just going to call that one face and once we've made all the choices within the form we can use this option here to apply that and we can see in the 2D view that we have this preview here and then in the 3D view we have this shape and if I just click on the model in plane and just move my mouse up we can see uh, what the vectors and these settings have created for us. I'm going to click this icon here to put that into isometric view and then we can come over to the bottom of the create shape form and press the close option here and so we've now created our first 3D component and we can see now that that face component has been added to my base level within my component tree and if I select that we can see that the grayscale is highlighted in the 2D view we can also see that the model is also highlighted there in the 3D view and we can move that around and edit that as an object in its own right if I click on the background that will just deselect everything and now we can start to think about the next set of components I'd like to create so what I'd like to create is the details that go on top of the face so we're going to look at the eyes, the snout, the nose and the mouth area so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a new level to do that I'm going to right mouse click on the base level I'm going to use this option here to insert a new level and then I'm going to right mouse click again I'm going to rename this level and I'm going to call this one details and so this will house all of the details within this level now the details level is adding on top of the base level so anything that I create within this level is going to sit on top of the component that we've already got here so with that highlighted we can now go ahead and start to create our next set of components so now I'm going to select this oval vector here that represents the snout with that selected I'm going to come back up to the model and tools section and use the create shape from vectors form and I'm going to work through this example by typing in the angle values just to make it easier uh, to follow along but you can change the angle here just by using the slider and you can see that just by moving that we're getting instant results here in the 3D view I'm just going to put in a specific value in here so we'll go with 35 degree angle base height 0, final height no limit we do not want to tilt on this component and then we're going to set the combine mode to add in this case I'm going to call this one snout then we can go and press apply and then we can use this option here to start a new component and so that's added our component to the component list and it's enabled us to stay in the form so that I can select more vectors to create more components so then I'm going to select this vector here that represents the nose the angle I'm going to put in 60 degrees in this case and we're going to go the same settings, no base height no limit for the final height I'm going to call this one nose we want that to add on top of the snout that we just created so we're going to make sure the combine mode for this is set to add we'll press apply and we can see that's been added there in the 3D view again let's go to start new component this time we're going to create the eyes now I can create a component that represents two vectors in this case and to do that I'm just going to select one vector and then holding down shift that allows me to select multiple vectors now that they're both selected I can apply um, a profile and then select the angle like we have done previously so for this we're going to go with a 40 degree 
zero base height, no limit. Then we're going to call this one eyes and if I press apply you can see it's created that shape for both of those vectors but it will be seen as one individual component. Again let's go over and start new and then we'll create the mouth so we'll select the vector that represents that mouth area. Again curved profile for the angle we're going to go with 50 degrees, zero base height, no limit. Set that to add and then let's call that one mouth. And then if we press apply you can see how that looks. Okay so we can see that we set the combine mode of that to add. It doesn't look too bad however I think it would look better and a little more like a bear if we had that subtracting into the snout. So if I change the combine mode and change that to subtract you can see that, that looks a lot better there and so that's subtracting into the shape below it. So I'm happy with that so let's just close that form down and so we can see those components that we've just created have been added to the details level within my component tree. So everything in the details level is adding on top of the face shape within that base level. What I'd like to do now is look at creating the components that will represent my ears. And ideally what I would like to do is have my ears blending in to the main face shape of my bear. So to do that I need to insert a new level. So I'm going to right mouse click on the details level. I'm going to use this option here to insert a new level. And we'll right mouse click again and we'll rename that level. And we're just going to call that level ears. Now we can see that the ears level is currently adding on top of the details and top of the base level. Now if I want the components within this level to blend in to the face shape then I need to change the combine mode of this level altogether. So if I right mouse click here I'm going to go into the combine mode and we can see we have various different ways that we can combine this level. If I want my ears to blend into the face shape then I need to use the option to merge. You can see that the icon has now changed and the ears level is now merging with the levels below it. So anything that I create within this level should blend in to the uh, face shape that's underneath. So with that um, level highlighted there I'm going to select this vector here I'm going to hold down shift and select this vector here I'm going to go back into the create shape form to create the ear components. So again let's assign a profile so we're going to go with a curved profile we're going to put in an angle of 40 degrees base height is 0, final height is no limit we do not want to apply a tilt in this case we're going to set the combine mode for this to add and then we'll go ahead and call that ear outer press apply you can see that there I'm then going to start a new component and I'm going to select the inner vectors this time so I'm going to hold down shift to select both of those and we're going to go with an angle a bit smaller this time so I'll make that 35 degrees again zero base no limit this time what I'd like to do is we'd like to subtract into the outer ears that we just created there. So if I use the subtract option then we're going to call that ear inner and if we press apply then we can close that down. So there we have our finished teddy bear composite model in the 3D view there. So let's just take a moment to think about the component tree and how this is ordered in order for us to see uh, the composite model as we do right now. So I'm just going to uncheck the ears level. I'm just going to do that by just selecting that box. You can see now that everything is deselected. I can no longer see the grayscale in the 2D view. I can no longer see the ears in the 3D view. And I'm going to also switch off the details level so I can't see anything within that level also. And then we'll just look at the base level. So we started off by creating the base level in order for us to house this component that represents the face. 
So this face is just adding to nothing, it's just adding to the modelling plane along with our level. The level's also just adding to that modelling plane. Then we wanted to create components that would sit on top of our face shape and so to do that what we did was created a detailed level. So we created a new level that's adding, we can see the combined mode of that level is adding on top of the base level. So anything that's created within this level just adds on top of this face shape that you can see here. So let's switch that on. So we created our snout first. On top of the snout we had the nose. So the nose is adding on top of that snout. I just switch everything off and just work through each one and selecting those so we can see how that works. So we've got the snout adding on top of that face shape. The nose is adding on top of that snout. The eyes are also adding on top of the face shape below that. And then we have the mouth that's subtracting into the snout area here. We then moved on and we created the ears where we created a new level called ears and we set the combined mode of this level to merge as we wanted the components within this level to merge with the levels below it. So if I switch that on you can see that they are blending in to the face shape below. If I just change the combine mode of this to add, just so you can see how this works, I'm just going to go to the combine mode and use the option to add. So you can see that this is not the look that we were going for. You can see that the ears are being added on top of the face shape. And so having the combine mode of the level set to merge, you can see it's blending into the level below it. And within that level, we had the ear and then we had the inner ear subtracting into the outer ear. And so there we have our finished model. So let's just put that in isometric view. And so at this stage we could go and calculate all of the toolpaths, but it's also possible to make edits to the individual components. So what I can do is I can select components from the component tree or from the 2D view or even from the 3D view and then to select multiple components I could hold down shift and select other ones and then I could look at sizing those, I could rotate the components or I could move them around. I'm just going to go to the edit option up here and I'm going to undo the move, undo the rotate and undo the size. And so you can see that we have a lot of power over these individual shapes that we've created. And there are many other editing tools that we can access to make changes to these also. In addition to these changes, we may also want to edit and change the height of the part before we go and calculate the toolpaths. So to do that, I'm just going to deselect everything and we're going to use this option up here to scale the Z height of the model. So we can see here that the current height is just below 0.6 of an inch and we have the option here to set in an exact height. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to round this up to 0.6. So we're going to go to set exact height and I'm just going to round that up to 0.6. Press apply. We can close that down. The changes have been updated to our model and so the highest point of our model is going to be 0.6 inches. We can then go ahead and OK that form. So now that we're satisfied with the height of our model, we now need to prepare this for machining. Now in order for us to machine this, we need to have a single vector that's going to represent the area that we want to cut, that we can use as a boundary vector, and that will contain the toolpath that we're going to calculate. If we wanted, we could click on all of our components by using the Shift key to select all of those, and we could use this option here to create a vector boundary within the modeling tools, and that will create a vector boundary around those components. But in this case, we actually have three vectors here that if welded together would create a perfect outline in order for us to create our toolpaths. So I'm going to take a copy of those and I'm going to edit them. To help me keep this organized, I'm going to use layers. And layers are a good way for us to manage 2D data in the software. So from the 2D view, I'm just going to select the vector that represents the face. I'm going to hold down shift and select the left outer ear vector and still holding down shift I'm going to select the 
right outer ear. And then if I right click, that will bring up a context sensitive menu. And to use this option down here to copy to layer. Okay, so you can see we have layer 1, that's the layer that we are currently working with. And then we could use the option to create a new layer. So I'm going to use the new layer. And that's going to bring up this dialog here. So I could enter a name if we wanted to. We're only working with two layers, so I don't really need to change the name in this case. I'm going to make this layer visible. And I'm also going to check the option to make this layer active. We can then go ahead and press OK. And what we've done is we've taken a copy of those three vectors and put them onto layer 2. So let's go to the Layers tab and then let's just undraw everything by selecting the light bulb there. And if we just switch on layer 1, you can see that we've got all of our original vectors and the component grayscales that we created earlier on this layer. And if I switch that off and switch on layer 2, we can see that we've got the three vectors that we copied over to this layer. Now it's worth noting here that what you view in the 2D view does not affect what you see in the 3D view. That is always derived by what you can see in the component tree. And so if we go into the modeling tab, and so we can see in the 3D view that the composite model is always defined by the components that we have visible within our component tree, the order that they are in the list, and the combined modes of the levels and the components. So let's go back into the drawing tab. And then with those vectors selected, if you haven't got your vectors selected, then just select each one by selecting that and then holding down shift to select the other two. And then we're going to come over under edit objects and we're going to use this option to weld selected vectors. And so that's going to leave us with a silhouette of those vectors. So now that we have this vector, we can use this for our toolpath boundary. So let's go and switch over to the toolpaths tab. So we're going to go into the 2D view control and use the option here to switch over to the toolpaths tab. And so now that's hidden the design tabs on the left. I can just select those to view each one of those. We've got the drawing tab, the modeling tab and so on. If I just click back into the space here, it will draw back in. And over on the right hand side, we can see that it's pinned open the toolpaths tab. So now we can access the icons to create the toolpaths. Now before we calculate any toolpaths, it's important that we first set up our material. So we're going to use this option over here to set the material. And this is very important because it references what we're doing in the software to positions on the CNC itself. And this is where we start to relate the virtual to the actual. So we're going to begin by setting our Z0 and the material thickness. The Z0 I'm going to set off the top of the material block. The material thickness, I need to specify the thickness of material that I'm working with. And in this case, I'm working with 3 quarter inch material. We then move on to the XY datum position. And so this is where we tell the software where on the machine we want to set the XY0. Now this doesn't matter in terms of the fact it's really a personal choice where you set this, but a lot of people prefer to set that to the lower left hand corner because that's typically the way most CNC machines are referenced from in the lower left. That way your X and Y values will be positive. But you should always pick one that's suitable for your particular machine. And then we move on to the model positioning material. Now because we have a 3D object, we need to relate where this model is going to be positioned within our material block. And so if I wanted to, I could use this slider. So this lighter area represents my model. We can see here we've got the model thickness is 0.6. You'll remember that's what we scaled our model to earlier. And so by moving this slider, I can choose where I position this within my material block. It's a good idea to have a little bit of space between the model and the top of the material block to ensure that we don't end up with any flat spots if the material isn't correctly sized. So I'm going to type in a value here of 0 0.03 and so that will leave a gap below of extra stock underneath our model of 0.12. We then move on to the rapid Z gaps above the model and check our home and start position. I'm just going to change the Z for our home start position to be 
five and if you plan to actually machine the examples shown in this tutorial then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. So now I can go and press OK. So we're now ready to calculate our toolpaths. So the first thing I need to do is select that vector boundary in order for us to govern the area for my toolpaths. With that vector selected we're going to come over to the toolpath operations and we're going to use this option here to create a 3D roughing toolpath and this will hog away the majority of the material using a bigger tool where we can then come back later on and apply a finishing toolpath to using a smaller tool to finish that off. So let's go in here and the first thing that we need to do is then assign a tool to this toolpath. To do that I'm going to use the select option here and that will open up my tool database. So in here I can keep all of the information for my tools, I can look at creating new tools if I wanted to and I could just choose a tool from the list. So in the Imperial Tools section I'm going to select the quarter inch end mill from the list. You can see that we have all of the information about this tool here. I'm going to go the default settings that are already here and then press OK. We then move on to the machine limit boundary, so we can select the model boundary, material boundary, all the selected vectors. Now we had a good set of vectors there, so we're going to go with the selected vector and we move on to the boundary offset. As I'm working with a positive shape, it's a good idea for me to put in a small offset in here. And that's so that the center of the tool doesn't just come up to the vector, it's just going to come past it by the amount that I offset that. A good offset is always uh, a bit bigger than the radius of the tool plus the machine allowance. So I'm just going to go with a value of 0.18 in this instance. And so the centre of the tool is going to come past the vector by 0.18 of an inch and that's going to ensure that it's going to cut down the side of my model. We then move on to the machine allowance. And so this is where you can uh, put in a value and the software will create an imaginary skin over the model. And so if I put in the value of 0 0.03, so this skin over the model which is 0 0.03 inches thick, that will stop the tool going into it when it's doing the roughing pass. And so this helps avoid any chance of it chipping and make sure that we have some material left for when we come back with the finishing pass. Let me move on to the roughing strategy. In this case I'm going to apply a Z-level strategy. We're going to raster X and then we'll profile that last. If I wanted to I could add in ramp plunge moves and then at the bottom I have the option here to give my toolpath a name. And So I'm going to call this 3D roughing bear and then I have the option here to press calculate. So let's just calculate that and we can see the toolpath drawn in the 3D view and these lines are the actual path that the tool is going to follow on the machine. You can also see that the software has opened up this preview toolpaths form. So to help me uh, see how this will look I can use this option over here to preview the selected toolpath. So let's use that option there and that's just going to take the toolpath that we just calculated and it's going to animate it in virtual piece of wood and we can see that's happening here in the 3D view. And So this preview that we've got here is exactly what we're going to get on the machine. So we can take a look at that and we can see that we have lots of steps left by that toolpath. We can see it's hogged out a lot of the material that's made it safe for us to go back and cut the rest of our teddy bear model with a finishing toolpath. So I'm happy with that. So let's just close that down, put that back in ISO and we move on to our finishing toolpath. So make sure we've still got our vector selected here then we'll go into the 3D finishing toolpath. And so then we need to select a tool so I'm going to use the select option here, open up the tool database and the tool I'd like to use is this one here, the 8th inch ball nose. And I could go ahead and press OK. If I wanted to edit the settings for this tool, for this particular toolpath alone, then I could use the edit option in here and alter some of the parameters or feeds and speeds to however I felt was safe to do so for my particular machine. 
In this case I'm just going to go with the defaults that we've got here and then I could go ahead and press OK. We then move on to the machine limit boundary. Again, we're going to use that selected vector that we've got. And then for the boundary offset, I'm just going to go a little bit larger than the radius of the tool. So the tool we're using is an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to put in an offset of 0 0.08 in this case. We can then move on to the area machine strategy, where I could choose the option to offset that, so that's just going to follow the shape of my model, or I could use the raster option and that will just go back and forth. The raster angle, I'm going to leave that at zero, so that it's parallel to the x-axis. We can then give that a name, so I'm going to call that 3D Finish. There, and then we'll press Calculate. So you can see that toolpath represented by the blue lines here. And then we can go and preview that toolpath. And again, it's just going to animate that uh, in the virtual piece of material so that we can see how that would look when that is finished on our machine. Okay, so that's just going to take a little bit longer because it's a bit more detailed to work with. Okay, and then we can go and maximize the 3D view and take a look at that. So I'm happy with that. So I think we can go ahead and move on to our last toolpath now. So we'll use the close option here. I'm going to go to view and then we'll tile our windows vertically, put that back in the ISO view. Again we've still got our vector selected here, so now we can come over to the toolpath operations and select our profile toolpath. Ok so we'll start by looking at the cutting depth, so we're going to make the start depth 0, cutting depth we're going to cut all the way through the material block, so we're going to make that 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to check this option here to show advanced toolpath options so we get a few extra things that we could take a look at or choose. We then move on to the tool. In this case uh, it is the quarter inch end mill that I'd like to use to profile the part. And so I'm just going to use this edit option here just to check some of the parameters in there. Okay, so I'm happy to go in there with a pass depth of a quarter of an inch. Again, make sure that the settings are appropriate for your machine and the tools that you have and the material that you're using. Okay, so I'm just going to press OK there and we can see that's going to cut that in three passes. We're going to machine outside of the vector that we've got here. Then we can move down and then what I'd like to do is add tabs to my toolpath. And having these tabs added to my toolpath means that I'll be able to hold my model within my material block as I don't have any other form of hold down uh, for my piece of material. So we're going to check this option here to add tabs to toolpath. Here we can specify the length for the tab, so in this case I'm just going to go with half an inch and then for the thickness I'm just going to go with 0.1. Then I'm going to use this option here to edit the tabs. Okay, so you can see we have the add tabs option up here. I can put in a constant number if I wanted to. So if I put in a value of 3 and then press this option here to add tabs, you can see in the 2D view that we've created three squares on our vector and they all have the letter T in. So it's telling me that this is a tab. So this is where the software has automatically placed those tabs. If I wanted to, I could move them around if I didn't like where the software automatically put them. Or I could select one to delete it, and then I could just click anywhere on the vector to reinsert another tab. I'm going to move that round, maybe bring that back down again. Okay, so I'm happy with the positioning of those tabs there, so we can go ahead and close that down. And so that will automatically add tabs to my toolpath as long as I have this add tabs to toolpath option checked. You can move that down and then I'm going to rename this toolpath. So we're going to call this profile there and then cutout. I could go ahead and press calculate. Again, we can see that the toolpath is represented by those blue lines there. It's automatically opened up the preview toolpaths form. And we can go and preview that toolpath. If we just maximize the 3D view, and we can see those tabs in position there. And we could look at just removing those manually once the machining process is finished. Okay, so I'm happy with that.
And so now we're ready to go and output all of those toolpaths to our CNC machine. So what we need to do is look at saving those. So to do that we're going to use the close option here. I'm going to select the 3D roughing bear and I'm going to come over to this option over here to save the toolpath. Okay, so you can see we have the 3D roughing bear toolpath listed in the toolpaths to be saved. So you must make sure that the toolpath you want to save is in that list. Then you need to select a post processor so that will format the data correctly for the particular machine. So you need to choose one that's suitable for your machine. So in this case I'm just going to go through the list and just pick one here. So that's appropriate for my machine. And then I'm going to use this option here to save the toolpath. Okay, so in here I could go ahead and just save that toolpath. I'd press save in this case. For the uh, purposes of this example I'm just going to press cancel. And so with that saved toolpath, you could put that on a thumb drive and take that over to your CNC machine and that would be the actual file that would be able to run in order to cut out the roughing toolpath for this particular part. We then go through the others and do the same process, so we go to the 3D Finish Bear, again check the toolpath to be saved and that it's listed as the correct toolpath that you've got selected here. Again, we'll go and check the post processor, make sure that's the same, and we'll save that out. And then we'll do the same for the profile also. And so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at how we can take a set of existing vectors, we looked at using the create shape form to create the models to create a complete model that you can see here. We then took that model and we looked at calculating some basic toolpaths in order for us to cut that out on our CNC machine. So it'd be a good idea to go and save this at this point, so let's just close that down. We'll go to File, Save As, and we're going to call this Teddy Bear Toolpath. And so we could come back in here at any point once we've saved that, uh, and we can edit the file if we wanted to, make changes, and look at those toolpaths again.